Welcome to another video from Smithsdale Farm. In our last video, we planted our first vegetable garden on the homestead. And in this video, we're going to be installing the irrigation system to water it. Being off grid means that we need to be really careful with our water usage. And we're limited to how much rainwater we can collect and store on the land. So keep watching to find out the method that we're using to try and combat the really hot, dry summers that we have in Spain. Now that we've all recovered from a few days of being sick, we've come up to the land just to check on everything. We've been away for slightly longer than we would have hoped. So most things are looking pretty thirsty. So we're giving everything a good drink now. Um, we've had one or two casualties, but all in all, things are looking all right. And I'm very happy to report that the almond is not completely dead. There's definitely some new green shoots coming, new leaves and hopefully it's going to recover really well. There are still one or two of these little bugs around um, that ate all of the almond last time, but nowhere near as many. So hopefully the birds are getting as many of them as possible. The fig does seem to have lost some of its leaves, um, but I don't know if maybe that might just be because this spot is a bit windy for it. I'm not sure. We'll see. The cherry, grapes, plum and pomegranate all seem to be doing quite well though and it looks like we might actually get some olives this year. Fingers crossed! In the last video we shared with you the start of our bathroom renovation. We'd already fixed some loose tiles and we'd started to micro cement the walls. And it was all going pretty well until it all came to a bit of an abrupt halt. All three of us caught a really nasty stomach virus that knocked us for six. And then on top of that, Danny got tendonitis in both wrists and Isabel started teething. Despite all of that, we've been pushing on with projects through the sleep deprivation and we've got a lot to share with you in this video. Danny got a lot done whilst Isabel and I were sick before he caught it himself, but he didn't really get a chance to film much. So you're joining us back in the bathroom where we've already put another layer on and we're getting on with the final coat. Okay, so that's most of the walls done now, all sanded uh, with the 120 grit and then I'm going to go around the hoover, get rid of a little bit of most of this dust and then yeah, give the walls a wipe and hopefully we can put on the last coat today. I have started on the final coat. You can see more or less where I've done to in the middle here. I'm trying to do a relatively thin layer but thick enough that when uh, we smooth it out, it doesn't leave too many kind of patches or lines. Um, and I'm trying to put on more material this time um, to do a larger area at once so that we get less kind of overlap marks. So far, it seems to be going okay. There's still going to be some sanding to be done at the end of this layer before we seal it. But yeah, I'm just gonna crack on and see how much more of this I can get done. This layer particularly, uh, more so than the others, is that you have to make sure you keep the utensils really really clean, um, so constantly kind of washing them, wiping them, making sure they're dry, so that you don't get any of the dried material making its way back into the layer as you smooth it over. Um, if you do end up getting a little bit that's dry, then it drags um, or creates a little lump that, that then kind of creates a channel through the rest of it. So um, yeah, for anyone who might try this in the future, one thing to do is just keep everything as really clean as you possibly can, um, and it does help a lot.
that wall. Wait, let me just turn. So I've just finished this wall here. Um, that probably took nearly an hour. My ears are ringing a bit, to be honest. I should probably have ear defenders on. It's definitely looking a lot smoother. Um, and a lot of the kind of joins and bumps are gone now, which is good. We don't want it to be a perfectly flat, even surface with no markings or, or anything. Like we actually want it to have a little bit of character. So it's quite nice that there are a few areas where there's little raised bits or kind of slight flecking. Um, we quite like that. So hopefully that will seal in and that will look nice. So yeah, this is the final coat on this wall. Um, I've still got a little bit of sanding to do uh, just around the sink and stuff here where I can't get to it with the orbital sander. So I need to do this bit here by hand, but it's looking really, really nice. And doing it with the Hoover, uh, the industrial Hoover or like construction Hoover um, is really, really good because it means that there's not dust everywhere. I also had the extractor fan on so that most of it was kind of being taken away. At one point I didn't put the hoover on just to do a very small patch and I really noticed how much dust was being left on the wall. So good to use that hoover because otherwise this room would be so dusty. But now I think it's time for a quick little break, a um, glass of water, definitely, and come back and look how this when it settles. too long but now I'm on my way back home I hear the west winds calling I'm my name they're telling me to head your way down your road and past your gates keep your eyes on the horizon I was looking to belong and I'd already found For the setting sun For you to fall into my arms The place I call my home I was looking to belong When I already found my Good morning. Apologies if I look a little bit um, dishevelled. <laughs> I have just frantically been sanding this wall. Um, I didn't film much yesterday because I was just trying to get as much done as possible. Um, so where we're up to now is this back wall here where the sink is, is finished. It's had its final coat, it's sanded and it's ready to be sealed. This one behind the shower is also the same, ready to be sealed and then um, here this wall has had its final coat and it's ready to be sanded. The final wall here where the door is still needs that final coat today and then once that's dried I'll sand that tomorrow morning um, and that will also be ready to be sealed. So we're almost there. I'm really really hoping that by the end of this weekend we might be finished. It's Saturday morning and I think we might be able to do it. I think we might be able to push through and get done by tomorrow night. Um, let's see, let's see how much we can get done. Yesterday we also measured out the new tap fitting and just played around with the plumbing a bit to make sure that that fit. Um, it's still got to be aligned, it's just slightly uh, off level. So uh, we had it right yesterday, but then we've had the, uh, the taps on and off a few times whilst I've been doing behind that wall. So um, that needs to be done. And we've also measured out where the uh, stand for the shower is going to go. And then this is where the glass shower screen will go. So yeah, it's all coming together pretty well. We've got the fittings ready to put up the mirror and uh, things like the towel rail and stuff like that. Uh, so all of those can go on once it's all been sealed. Last wall. you 
We're about to start doing some of the irrigation for the new veg beds that we made in the last video. And um, what we've gone and got is two different types of tubing. So we've got one that is a bit thicker. This is a, a 16 millimeter. Um, this is going to connect directly to the IBCs and use um, the kind of gravity to feed that pressure of water. And then what we've got is, uh, I think it's called the capillary tubing. Um, and this then goes off that main tube where the water comes to then direct it to each of the plants. It's been two days since we planted everything into these beds. Uh, well, two and a half now, I suppose, because it's now uh, late afternoon. And what we can see is that it's holding a bit of moisture, which is good. Um, and all of the plants are looking pretty healthy. The only ones that look like they've maybe drooped a little bit are the aubergine. Um, but the squash, the tomatoes, the peppers, um, everything's looking really good. So hopefully this is going to be a promising way of combating some of that really, really harsh, hot, dry summer that we're going to get um, and helping us to grow some veg that will actually bring us a good harvest. The idea with the straw beds is that it holds a lot of the moisture so that it doesn't escape or just evaporate. And then it means that the plants actually get a decent amount of the water that you're giving them or when it rains, it catches a lot as well. And that keeps them nice and healthy. We've spaced things out quite generously in these beds so far because we want to add more. Um, so we're just making sure that everything's got enough space to establish straight away and then we can come and interplant other things in between. We can add things like herbs or we want to add things like strawberries and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, loads and loads of space for loads extra. So we're not only going to leave them like this, we're going to add a lot more to these beds. It's got a little rubber, rubber seal on the inside of it, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. junction 
and nothing's leaking out of here but it doesn't feel like doesn't feel like water's getting to this bit I just had to open this end here and let the air out first um because I could hear the water coming to the t-junction but then because I hadn't opened that um the water wasn't coming here yet so just opened that a little bit of water came out closed it back up and now there's no leaks so that's good Danny's just done the same on this end here and got no leaks from that one either and on the end here where I've got the peach tree nothing leaking there either so that's a good evening's work a couple of hours just to get all of that set up and then now we can come up uh, this week and run the little capillaries so that it goes to each of the plants The other thing we'd like to do is kind of semi-bury this line um, with it being black and in the sunshine it's like to get very hot and I don't imagine hot water is good for the plants. So what we've done at the moment is put these connectors um, straight into the ground. So I don't know if you can see on camera, but what happens is the water comes down this little uh, capillary, goes into a little hole that then drips through a gap here. And then it's supposed to kind of drip down uh, these bits, these kind of channels. Um, but the pressure is actually quite good. In the shop, they told us that two and a half, three meters of elevation probably wasn't going to be, uh, strong enough, um, for the little drippers. And we would probably need this. Uh, but it does seem like the pressure is quite good. So we're wondering whether we should add some of these, which are the little kind of, um, flow regulators that help you to measure how much water you're giving per hour. These are, uh, two liters per hour, I believe. Um, we don't know whether to add those on or whether to just leave these because they go directly into the straw. None of the water's escaping. Uh, none of it's on the top surface. It's all kind of sitting underneath. So maybe it just means that we would need to leave the irrigation on for less time um, to give them all the same amount of water. So we could do two things. We can either leave it as it is um, 
and maybe just turn it on for five or ten minutes and give everything the water it needs or we can add the little flow regulators and come up and turn it on for longer or have a timer that uh, sets it to come on for a certain amount of time each day i don't know what are your opinions what would you do if it was your garden um let us know in the next video we're going to be tackling some plumbing and making the bathroom watertight. We're also going to be planting some more plants up here on the homestead. So if you've enjoyed this video then please give us a thumbs up and as always thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.